Here's a seemingly old laptop, and it sure is. This is a Dell Inspiron 4000. As you can see right there. Uh, this is a Pentium 3 700 megahertz, and um, I got this machine in some pretty poor shape. It came to me with no screws, although the screws were in the laptop bag, fortunately. They even ripped off the product key sticker. Not that it really matters, because it was Millennium, so who really would want that anyway? But even so, it was there, and they ripped that off. So anyway, this has a uh, just a plain uh, CDRW drive, uh, Pentium 3 700, like I said. Came to me with no RAM and no hard drive and no screws in it. So I had to figure out where all the screws went. I am still missing a couple of things and some other shit is broken. Uh, it looks like there was probably a grill over this. This piece comes off and uh, there was probably some sort of grill or grate over that to prevent shit from getting in the fan, but what are you going to do? And uh, this takes old SD RAM and I really didn't have anything so I looked through my entire pile twice and I found one 64 megabyte chip and I installed that and that's all I'm gonna need for it because I have plans for this unit I also put a hard drive in it now initially I went through and I found some old uh, oh, 06 or 8 gig drives I had and it turns out they were all bad, so I went through like almost all of my laptop drives and found that almost all of them were bad. And after going through everything and realizing that I'm not really going to need much storage for this, you can also see the, the line there where it won't snap together because somebody had tried prying it to open it and they broke the standoffs on the inside. All kinds of great stuff. This thing is in pretty sad shape. Um, anyways, I found that my other uh, ancient Inspiron, whatever the fuck that one is there, I had a 10 gig drive in, and because it has a lot more RAM in it, something like 256 I think maybe, uh, it would do better with a larger drive, so I stuck the 40 gig that I had put in here that I found that worked in that after taking an image of it, and uh, then I put the 40 gig in there, imaged it back and grew out the partition, put the 10 in here, and was able to finally install Windows. Uh, standard fare as far as ports and connectors go. Uh, a couple of card bus ports here. It's upside down, but too bad. You got your power connector, VGA, one USB 1.1, a combo PS2 keyboard mouse, a little tiny fan I've never seen run, a docking connector, 25 pin parallel, 9-pin serial, some more missing screws that were not in the bag, and one more there. And uh, now I'm going to fire this up, even though you already know what I'm going to use it for based on the title of the video. So let me get this plugged in. Alright, here we go. Oh, we're going to play the focus game, eh? It's going to keep focusing on shit behind it. I still have the Windows disk in the drive, just because I can. It's a little tough to record this now because uh, the, there's a bright window behind me. But uh, anyway, I'll let you watch what uh, XP takes to boot up in 64 meg of RAM. It's going to be exciting actually doesn't seem all that slow and I have patched this to service pack 3 I haven't done any Windows updates uh, that you would download because I don't have a network connection to this oh I also forgot to show you while that's still booting there's some ports here you have your uh, infrared window and headphone microphone dial-up modem Ethernet and S video So I took this thing from the complete dead and brought it back to life.
but I have plans for this. Uh, another interesting thing is in addition to having no RAM and no hard drive and no product key sticker for Windows, the CMOS battery was disconnected. You know, short of just burning it, I don't know what else to to really do. And you know, breaking the screen and ripping the keys off the keyboard and all kinds of shit like that. I mean, what more are you going to possibly do to it? This has a touchpad and also has the uh, glide point or whatever you want to call it, tit mouse with its own buttons as well. Or shall I call those the erogenous zones? I'm not sure. But anyway, this is booted up. And what am I going to use this for? Well, if you have an ancient laptop like this and you don't have parts for it really, but you can barely get it to run. Uh, one other little aside before I actually get into it. Uh, I'm going to attempt to get this thing to boot off of the network so I don't have to worry about that 10 gig drive because uh, I know that that is going to fail. So that's uh, going to be another project for another day, but for right now it can run the drive. I don't know when, if ever, I'll even get to that. Uh, but uh, I'm going to use this as a digital picture frame. And I will start the slideshow and then show you how I'm going to use it and uh, tell you how I'm going to overcome my problems. So here it is acting as a digital picture frame and um, I have no idea what's going to come up here. But anyways, uh, this is running right off of a uh, flash drive here just because that's handy as well and I can just plug it in. Yeah, it's USB 1, but that really doesn't make a difference. However, you may wonder why everything is upside down. And I have a very good reason for that. In fact, if you look, even the text is upside down. And I will show you what I did for that. First of all, let me exit this. And you can see the entire screen is upside down. Uh, there's a utility that I got, and it does not turn the mouse upside down, so I actually have just gotten good at doing this, called iRotate, and I will iRotate you so you can see that kind. It's called iRotate, and you can just Google that, and uh, then you can uh, flip your screen upside down. You're going to say, well, Jay, what in the hell are you possibly doing with the screen upside down? Does this help any? That's right, I'm going to mount it from the fucking ceiling. Just like that. Um, this is going to be a bit more difficult because this laptop is uh, pretty narrow. Uh, or, I'm sorry, it's pretty wide considering the, the floor joist gap here. So, uh, I was going to make like a, a bracket that went up and down and around like that and then I could screw it down on both sides. Uh, kind of here and here, but I'm never going to be able to get my arm in there to work on it. Well, maybe from the back or something like that. But that leaves the screen, and I know it's, I just don't have good lighting in this corner here. But that's actually a good thing, because <laughs> that way you can see the screen better. So now with the screen upside down, two wrongs make a right. With the picture upside down and the screen upside down, it's right side up again. And you can, of course, I really don't want to do this now because I don't have it bolted down, but you'll be able to change the angle of the dangle of the screen and display that as a digital picture frame hanging from the ceiling, which uh, from back here looks like there's just a fucking screen hanging from the ceiling. Pretty awesome. I gotta go, the phone's ringing. <laughs> 